Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, members, officers, and any members of the public who are viewing the live stream of this meeting. Welcome to this meeting of the Civic Affairs Committee on Thursday the 9th of September 2021. My name is Councillor Anna Bradnam and I'm the Chair of the Civic Affairs Committee. For the information of members of the public, our committee is responsible for reviewing the constitution, electoral arrangements and, promote, and for promoting and maintaining ethical standards. May I start with a few housekeeping announcements. Firstly, I'm aware that our microphone system has given trouble uh, earlier this week on both Tuesday and Wednesday. At the moment, it seems to be fine, and I'm very grateful for that, but I just wanted to clarify that none of this is in the gift of our officers who work very hard to make sure that it's working properly. Um, we are often in the hands of our engineers who are off-site. Can I please uh, remind people uh, that if you're present in the council chamber, everything in your desk, including your laptop screen, is likely to be broadcast at some point. The camera follows the microphone being switched on, so councillors and officers are advised to wait a couple of seconds before speaking to allow the camera to catch up. Please, can those participating in the meeting via the live stream indicate that you wish to speak via the chat column? Please use the chat column for any other purpose. Make sure that your device, sorry, please don't use the chat column for any other purpose because it is a live document. Please make sure that your device is fully charged and that you switch your microphone off unless you're invited to do otherwise. Please ensure that you've switched off or silenced any other devices you have so that they do not interrupt proceedings. And when you're invited to address the meeting, please make sure that your microphone is switched on. When you finish addressing the meeting, please turn your microphone off straight away. And also please remember to um, uh, speak slowly and clearly because of the internet not always being perfect. And please don't talk over or interrupt anyone. If we need to vote on an item, we'll use the microphones to vote. Only members in the chair, oh, sorry, in the, ch in the chair, in the chamber are allowed to vote. Those members who propose or second proposals must also be in the room. Committee members present, I'll now invite each of you to introduce yourselves. Members, after I call your name, please turn on your camera and microphone. Wait a couple of seconds, say your name so that your presence may be noted. Uh, may I start by asking uh, members in turn. Vice Chair, Councillor Dr. Can Claire Daunton. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'm Claire Daunton, uh, Vice Chair of this committee, and I'm one of the members for the Fen Ditton and Fulbourne Ward. Thank you. Councillor Henry Batchelor. Morning, Chair. Councillor Henry Batchelor, one of the members for the Linton Ward. Councillor Cathcart. Good morning. Nigel Cathcart, a member for Bassingbourne Ward. Thank you. Councillor Howell. Good morning, Chairman, Vice Chairman. My name is Mark Howell. I am the member for the Caxton and Papworth Ward. Councillor Howell, you might need to hold, have your microphone a little bit closer. It, it, just so that we can hear you more clearly. Thank you. Great. Um, I, oh, believe, I, I believe um, Councillor Heather Williams. Uh, Thank you, Chairman. Slight in shock because Councillor Howell's never been accused of not being heard before. Um, but um, I represent the Maldens Ward. He was speaking with unusual gentleness today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, are there, uh, we have no other members present in the room, but I know we have Councillor Dr. Martin Khan present online. Um, <laughs> Councillor Martin Khan, member for the It's lovely to see you. Thank you. Um, are there any other members attending online who I'm not unaware of? Um, yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, and remember, of, uh, members taking part online will not be able to vote. Okay. Uh, so. Can I also introduce um, our officers, Rory McKenna, who is the monitoring officer. 
and Deputy Head of Legal. Good morning, Chair and committee members. Thank you, Rory. And uh, Patrick Adams from Democratic Services. Good morning, Chair. Patrick is taking the minutes of this meeting. Uh, so, item one on the agenda, apologies. Um, Patrick, could you give us the apologies for the for absence for today, please? Certainly, Chair. We've had apologies from Councillor Bridget Smith, Councillor uh, Aidan van der Weyer. Thank and uh, just to be clear that Councillor Martin Khan is appearing uh, virtually because he's easily present. And is Councillor Richard Williams taking part as an observer or as a member of this committee? Sorry, just remind me. Councillor Richard Williams is not a member of the committee, okay. so he's taking part as an observer. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, right, so declarations of interest. Do any members have interest to declare in relation to any item of business on this agenda? If an interest subsequently becomes apparent later in the meeting, please would you raise it at that point? But do have any, have any members have any items to declare? Councillor Heather Williams. Thank you, Chairman. Um, just on the agenda item five about the update on code of conduct complaints, my same declaration as previous. We don't know who the parish councillors at, at Bassingbourne are, and as I know some of them, I have to declare it in case it's one of them. Okay, thank you very much. Um, sorry, Councillor Cathcart. Do you turn your microphone on, Councillor Cathcart? Yes, I, I know who those members are. Indeed. So you're making the same declaration. Thank you very much. So item three is uh, the minutes, uh, but a number of us noted that the minutes were not appended to this agenda. So uh, rather than approve them today, I'm going to propose we defer that to the next meeting of the Civic Affairs Committee. Is that agreeable? I agree. Okay, thank you very much. So we come on to item four, code of conduct, which asks the committee to recommend to council the adoption of a new code of conduct to take effect from May 2021. I think that might mean, we can't do it retrospectively, can we? Should it be May no, 2022? May yeah. It should be May 2022. I'm looking to Rory. Yeah, I think that's that's correct. If you notice uh, at the committee report on page 1.5, it does actually say in the recommendation that the guidance is to take yes. effect from May 22, and that's the recommendation under which members will be voting. Great. Thank you very much indeed. So um, can I ask Rory McKenna to introduce this item, please? Thank you. Oh, uh, sorry, Councillor Howell? Councillor Williams. Oh, Councillor Williams. Councillor Heather Williams. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I think I was going to introduce it as Chair of the Task and Finish Group. That's okay. That's fine. Yes, um, uh, so, so yes. Yeah, so the, the um, Anti-Bullying Task and Finish Group have looked at this um, in great detail. There's many, many pages of it, um, and we felt that it was a significant improvement, particularly around areas of harassment and others. So we were content to to recommend it with. Um, without any alterations. The reason for suggesting it comes into force in May 2022, as per page one, um, was mainly for an administrative point of view. There is significant changes into actually declarations of interest and how those are managed. Um, and given that the parish councils will most likely follow our lead, and there are district council elections in May 2022 and parish council elections then, it made sense to bring it all forward um, at that point rather than doing something now and having to repeat it at a later date. Uh, it was also raised that because it is significant changes that we will need to have training as well as members and others um, and any details of that uh, Mr McKenna I'm sure can, can fill members in on. Um, so our understanding is that there will be a full training programme on it as well. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much, Councillor Williams. Um, as a relatively a relative newbie to this subject, because I have only been the chair of this committee for a short time, um, could I ask the Vice Chair, who was involved in the 
in the derivation of this before as well for any comments. Yes, uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, yes, I'd like to, to uh, recommend this for adoption. I mean, the, the, the issue of discussing this model code of conduct goes back, I would have thought, probably about a year now, um, when there was um, discussion at full council. Uh, and myself and the then Chairman of Council, Dr. De Lacey, recommended looking at what was then um, in draft, the LGA model code of conduct in draft. And the LGA working party, um, cross party working party of the LGA had put on uh, their website an early version of what you see here today. Um, and it did seem sensible to work on that, to work on the draft. Um, and I'm glad to see that um, the final version has come to us here today. Um, there are a couple of points of detail that I wanted to take up, but I'll come back to those later. Thank you. Mr. McKenna, would you like to make any comments? Uh, thank you, Chair. So through you, um, obviously, the guidance which has now been produced by the Local Government Association uh, is, in my opinion, very extensive. I think it will benefit members, it will benefit members of the public, and it will also assist myself uh, in having to deal with any code of conduct complaints which, uh, unfortunately, do follow. Uh, the only other point that I would just like to make as well is that in having an implementation date of May 2022, that obviously facilitates the, um, the, the parish councils as well, and it would be the recommendation that, um, that they follow suit and adopt in, in May 2022, if that's their um, wish to do so, um, because as has been indicated, the member interest forms will need to be amended, given that the, there'll be changes in declarations of interest. So members will know them now, as disclosable pecuniary interests and non-disclosable pecuniary interests, DPIs and MPIs for short. Um, obviously, if this code is adopted, recommended to full council and ultimately adopted in September, uh, the forms will have to change. Obviously, DPIs will stay as they are, um, but uh, MPIs will be replaced by two other classifications of interests which are contained within the report. Um, Chair, I don't have anything else uh, that I want to say. I think it's been been covered. It's certainly my recommendation um, that members do recommend the Council the adoption of the new model code and the guidance. Thank you. Thank you. Um, my own observation is that the previous code of conduct was six, six, nine, nine pages and it's gone up to 16. But I think that's helpful in a way because I note that there are some very useful working examples in the um, guidance which are give guide, which are helpful for understanding. So I think it's quite good. Okay, so does anybody have any comments to have comments to make? Councillor Cathcart? I welcome this. It seems to be a useful strengthening, in fact, in many ways of the existing code, or based on the existing code. In particular, things like bullying and disrespectful um, behaviour do seem to be strengthened, more clearly defined here, because it's quite a subjective area. Um, and it, 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 I think members of the authority and the parish council need to be aware that it can actually cause difficulty, it can cause distress, in fact, you know. So um, I, I think that clarity is to be welcomed, frankly. And I think, for instance, parish councils or the parish council in this case need to be aware that it has been strengthened. Um, so one would look forward to, to it being implemented, you know. Um, uh, I mean, it, it, it is subjective, as I say. So it's quite, tr it's a tricky one. Um, the, the line between having an opinion forcefully expressed, um, which is fine, and, but going beyond that and actually trying to coerce people to, uh, to, to do it in a way that causes them to, to feel that they have been uh, treated dis dis disrespectfully. It is an area where judgment is required, there's no doubt about that, and we can't be subject to exact definition. But this does try to do that to the extent that it's possible, so I think that's to be welcomed. Um, and the, the only other point that I think I'd make is um, if complaints are made um, and are subsequently found not to have foundation, uh, I, I'm just wondering whether there's any scope for, how can I put this? Um, uh, uh, the applicant 
you see, in, in law, if in fact, for instance, you take a case against someone and it's found not to be valid, then that often costs. What I'm really trying to say, the code is it's too easy to make a complaint which doesn't have foundation, uh, only to find the applicant, the individual has spent a lot of time on it, causes the distress, and it's, it's totally apart from foundation. And really a question for Rory, I suppose. Is there anything, for instance, can, is there any mechanism for charging? Uh, I mean, in law, if you lose a case, you expect to pay the legal costs. I don't really know. It's just a, just a question, query to wonder whether um, uh, a failed complaint can attract, you know, any sort of a, uh, the cost to the authority in dealing with it. Let's, let's put that question to uh, Ethan McKenna. It's, you probably can't. <laughs> and, and thank you, Chair. And uh, through you, I think Councillor Cathcart has actually just answered his own question there. Uh, unfortunately, the short answer is um, no, there's no ability uh, to recover costs in that event. Right, I see. That's, I just wonder because it, it would take, a, that takes quite a lot of office of time to deal with. Uh, and it would be a way of making people pause and think about whether the claim really is actually uh, valid or not. But that, as you say, there's no, there's no, no mechanism for dealing with it. Uh, yeah, I, I absolutely take your point on board. I suppose the counter to that argument is you wouldn't want to put people off making a complaint for fear no. that they might get costs awarded against them. Yeah, yeah. The it, it's a tricky one, I agree, yeah. because you don't want to discourage valid complaints. Um, but as, uh, what I'm really trying to say is it would be nice to feel there's some way of discouraging frivolous or complaints that are made without foundation. To support. But apparently there isn't any way we can do that. Not that I'm aware of. Okay, thanks very much. I'm aware that in the room we have requests to speak from Councillor Henry Batchelor and Councillor Heather Williams, but first of all, I'm going to take Councillor Martin Khan as he's remote. Ma Councillor Khan, would you like? Thank you, Councillor Khan. It's um, a very good point. I don't know whether we've... Can, uh, Mr McKenna. Uh, thank you, Chair. So, so through you, um, if members turn to page two of the report at point four, 14, one of the changes that is proposed is a new classification of interests known as other registrable interests. Um, and you can see there at A, B and C the different categories of, of interest that need to be registered and then within the guidance it does give further information as to uh, the detail of, of what, what would need to be registered. So for instance if you look over at page four there is detailed guidance, I don't propose to go through it in the meeting here today, but it, there is detailed guidance for instance about campaigning and Facebook groups and the need for those to be registered. So what I can say to members is that there is a lot more detail um, certainly in the new proposed code and in the guidance to, to, to deal with such matters. Thank you, Mr McKenna. So, Councillor Henry Batchelor. Thank you, Chair. Just, I'll, be, I'll be brief. Uh, just say I, I will be supporting this. I think anything that brings us in line with the LGA's recommendations, I think, can only be a positive thing. Um, specifically, as Councillor Khan just mentioned, the, um, the expansion on uh, registrable interests, um, I think that is a positive change. Uh, anything that clarifies that, given it's quite a, a serious thing that councillors, both districts and parish, need to do, um, I think can be a positive. I mean, if we look on the next item, I think there are a couple of complaints against various people um, regarding uh, not registering interests correctly. So I think the clarity around that will be um, a positive step. Um, yeah, so as I say, fully supportive of this, and I trust the work of the task and finish groups who will be supporting. 
you very much, Councillor Batchelor. Councillor Heather Williams. Thank you, um, Chairman. And I would just say on, on the remarks from Councillor Carlery and Facebook and campaigning and other things such as that, I'm not quite sure what's going on with the video. Is it scrolling up there? Um, and uh, yeah, so I think that's why when I introduced the item I said about the training, I think that's going to be really, really important and crucial to get that right. Um, just on the um, comments from Councillor Cathcart, I think what can be made clear is that about how we deal with a vexatious person, for example. So if somebody puts a complaint in against somebody time after time after time, always being found you know, without grounds and everything else on the same basis, then I think we do have we do have protocols in place for that um, and maybe it might be worth making sure that that's accessible alongside the code of conduct i mean as mckenna will know more than myself um because i think that's you know we don't want to discourage people from make a complaint but i, I see what you mean if, if one person is becoming sort of persecuted in in some respect you want to give them some protection and i think the vexatious policies perhaps would would do that that is my understanding too. So, McKenna, would you like to respond on that? Yeah, um, the Chair, Councillor Williams is absolutely correct. The Council does have a, a vexed complaints policy that could be engaged if that scenario were to arise. Thank you. Uh, and Councillor Dr. Claire Dalton. Thank you. Um, I'm really pleased to see it spelled out clearly on page 25. Um, under respect. Respect means politeness and courtesy in behaviour, speech and in the written word. And I, I, I do think that's really important. And um, I know that we have seen egregious examples of um, that not being observed. And I think having it spelled out here and our reiterating that um, is really very important. And actually, <laughs> one would hope that there would be no dispute about the meaning and the exercise of politeness and courtesy and behaviour. Um, one would hope that. Thank you very much. Good point. So it doesn't sound as though anybody wishes to vote against this proposal. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Councillor Hull. Yeah, I don't want to vote against it. I want to ask a question. Okay, sorry, <laughs> no, I didn't clear. see you before. Do go, go ahead. Um, just one thing. Um, I, I don't know if this can be answered, but it'd be a good one for Rory to, to have a go at anyway. When, <laughs> when is a councillor not a councillor? So when does a councillor in, in a, on a Friday night in a public house with a couple of drinks inside them, not a councillor, and if things get a bit heated, then that can't be classified as being um, them acting in a disrespectful manner to somebody or whatever. Is, is, have I missed that somewhere? Um, thank you, Councillor Hyle, for the question. I have to say, sometimes that can be quite a contentious point because obviously one of the first things that I need to consider along with the independent person in the investigation of any complaint is are they acting in their capacity as a councillor? Now, on page 40 of the agenda pack, um, there is actually very detailed guidance around that very scenario. Um, and as you know, you will note at the bottom of page 41, they do go on to give specific examples of, where, of when a, a councillor um, is indeed acting in, in their capacity. Because obviously, if you're acting in your capacity as a private individual, um, you, the, you're the code of conduct is, is not engaged. But sometimes it's not as, as clear cut. And um, it's a matter of the facts of the individual circumstances. But certainly, the guidance in that respect is very, very helpful. Uh, I'm not going to go through the examples, so they're there for members to see. Um, I think one of them talks about situations about whether or not there is a relationship between a councillor and a, an employee, for instance, where the code be engaged in that circumstances. And I think uh, they, they, they go on to give more detail, but um, uh, it's certainly helpful from my point of view to have this guidance in assessing whether or not the code is engaged in any particular circumstance. Chairman, with your indulgence, please. Um, the reason I'm asking that is that if, for example, and I'll stick to the example I just gave a councillor is out and they're having a night out with some friends and then somebody says to them something about a, I don't know, a planning issue in the local area or, or, or for that matter a contentious issue that happens to be taking place. 
is the councillor then, when they're given information, a councillor, or are they um, somebody in the pub who's had several drinks and things get heated? I, I'm just, I, I, as long as that's taken into consideration, I, I don't think we can legislate or define it one way or the other, because the one, the, the, the role swaps back and forth. As long as you that would be taken into consideration, I'm happy with that. It, it, it would absolutely be taken into consideration, and I think you would then get into the detail of the facts of a particular circumstance. So if you, for instance, were out on a Friday night having a few drinks with your friends and your family, and somebody decided that they wanted to engage you in your role as a councillor, but you made it very clear, I'm off duty, I'm with my friends and the family, I would say in that instance that very clearly you're not acting in your capacity as a councillor, albeit someone's trying to engage you. Now, I'd say if you were to then engage that person and say, you know, this is the person you need to speak to, or you, you know, you engaged in the discussion, then it might be that you are acting in your capacity as a counsellor. Certainly, if you're if you're giving advice and you're clearly holding yourself out to be a counsellor, then arguably at that stage the code would be engaged. But it's very much a matter of the the circumstances that that led to it. If you've said, I'm I'm, I'm off duty. Thanks very much. I'm not interested then no, the code wouldn't apply, in my opinion. And to, to be fair, um, what I see is, it, is it, uh, it can clearly be a very fine line. And indeed, in the example on page 42, it refers to a situation where you might be misusing or attempting to misuse your position as a counsellor. And that, and I'm reading from it, would include if you threatened to use your position improperly to block someone's planning license or grant application. Um, whereas if somebody said to you, what, what, what do you think would be the best thing to do in this situation? Uh, you know, for, you, you know, because you're on planning committee, that, that might be a slightly trickier thing, mightn't it? And I guess the situation would, depending on the situation, you would decide whether to say, actually, I don't think I can advise you on that on a Friday evening in the pub or whether you say, actually, if you want to email me, I'll deal with it through email at a later date. Would that be a wise move? I, I think it's reasonable probably to assume in that situation that you're not acting in your capacity as a counsellor and therefore the code wouldn't be engaged. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Is that satisfactory, Councillor Howell? I think it's one of those um, situations we'll have to see when uh, when it arises. But um, yes, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Uh, oh, and Councillor Henry Batchelor. Yeah, thank you. I won't delay proceedings, but just a quick question. We've mentioned parish councils a couple of times. Is there any, um, should this code be adopted starting May 2022, is there any obligation for parish councils to adopt this particular code as well, given that... Um, yeah, again, on the next item, we have seven complaints against parish councils, predominantly around the Code of Conduct. So um, I just want to ask, is it going to be uniform across districts and parish? My understanding is that it's optional, but uh, Mr McKenna. So, so the position regarding parish councils is similar to the district councils in as much as they must have adopted a code relevant to their parish council. Now, my understanding is that the majority of parish councils in South Cairns have adopted the local authority model code, but there are some who have um, not followed the model and have got their own code relevant to their own circumstances. I would imagine that the majority will follow the council's lead and will adopt the, the, the model code, um, but they're not obliged to. Thank you. Um, so, um, it doesn't look to me as if anybody's minded to vote against this proposal. So, are we uh, able to take that by affirmation, Mr McKenna? Or do you want to? I would be happy for it to be taken by, by affirmation, Chair. Okay, so I'll, I'll just read the recommendation. Just one moment. So the recommendation is that Civic Affairs Committee recommends to call council the adoption of the model code and guidance to take effect from May 2022. So will all those in agreement raise your hands? Okay, so that's unanimous. Thank you very much. So that's carried. So item five on our agenda is the update on the Code of Conduct complaints. Um, can I ask Mr McKenna to introduce this item, please? Um, thank you, Chair. So through you, this is the standard 
of the 18 report, there is no vote required um, that is taken at the end of each civic affairs committee and it updates members on progress of code of conduct complaints. Um, as you can see from the report, uh, there were a number of complaints um, which were ongoing since the last time committee resolved, uh, the committee met. Um, I'm pleased to say that um, the majority have now been um, dispensed with um, and decisions have been issued. Um, there are two complaints which are currently outstanding. And Chair, that's my report. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr McKenna. Um, would anybody like to ask any questions? No, okay. So we're simply asked to recommend, uh, to note that uh, report. Civic Affairs are asked to note the progress of any outstanding complaints and the conclusion of cases resolved since the last meeting, and we've done that. So thank you. Um, members, you'll see from your agenda that the next meeting is scheduled to be held on the 7th of December, 2021, at 10 a.m. And with that, I'd like to say thank you very much to those who took part online, and thank you to those who attended here in the council chamber. And I close the meeting at 10.34. Thank you. Chairman.